Thank you, Saxton, and um, Happy New Year to everybody. Um, it's a pleasure to be here and to do this webinar for you. Um, uh, kick off the kick off the year right. Uh, I, I want to start by saying that my uh, my expertise on this subject is is really because I've sort of lived and breathed it, and I think that's important to start off that you all understand as we go through. I'll share some stories from my own perspective as well. So um, as Saxton said, we're talking about branding you, elevating yourself, your teams, your business, and your appeal in a crowded market through personal branding. So hello, happy new year. Um, my name, as I said, is Tim Bainton, and, and I want to take you on this transformative journey of personal branding uh, in coaching, in coaching, in the sports business, and, and in life in general. In the ever-evolving world of sports, where the game constantly changes, how do you as a coach not only adapt, but also learn to thrive? Today, we're not just talking about strategies and tactics used on the field, on the court, in the gym, but about a strategy for your most important player, yourself. Imagine your brand as a spotlight on the unique value you bring to the world of sports and to the bigger community in which you serve. It's not just about logos or catchy phrases. It's the essence of your story, your coaching philosophy, and how you connect with your team and your community. It's about carving out your niche in a crowded field and being the coach that athletes aspire to work with and teams vie to have. So whether you're a seasoned coach or just starting, because I know there's going to be a plethora of backgrounds uh, on this webinar, uh, this is your playbook to create a personal brand that resonates, impacts, and leads to a fulfilling coaching career. So let's dive in and discover how you can elevate your game by building, building a brand that is as compelling and as unique as you and your coaching offerings. I'm just going to say this one last thing. For this to truly work, you must be willing to put your head above the precipice. You must be willing to share who you are and what you are truly about. Do not be constrained by the job, the title, or the expected definition of a coach, because those things have changed in today's modern world. Embrace opportunity and want as much for yourself as you do for your players. For each slide, as cheesy as it sounds, I'll give you a practical Tim's tip, something that you can jot down and start working on, and hopefully uh, the whole purpose of this is that you'll leave with some very actionable tasks to hit the ground running and to start the new year off right. So my first tip, start introspecting about what makes your coaching style unique. What is different about it? Jot down your core values, your strengths, and what you believe in and how you believe that sets you apart. Personal branding, let's understand it. Your per personal branding is the practice of marketing yourself and your career as a brand. It's an ongoing process of developing a reputation and impression that resonates with your audience, be it athletes, fellow coaches, or the broader sports community. In coaching, your brand encapsulates your coaching philosophy, your achievements, also your failures as well, your communication style, and your unique approach to the game. So the takeaway on this one is create a brand statement. The same way that you see big brands, the Nikes and the Mercedes of the world, for example, they have a brand statement. What is your brand statement? Um, this should be a concise sentence, just summarizing what you stand for and what you are about. Slide. So a big part of this, to be successful is that people have to buy in, right? In branding you, you've got to have people want to be a part of what you have to offer. And I think that's indicative of any successful coach. People want to be around them. They want to be a part of their teams. They want to be a part of their infrastructure. So the authenticity that needs to be in place. So central to personal branding is authenticity. And it is vital that it is consistent as well. It's about showing your true self, your flaws as well, including your values, your beliefs, your principles. Oprah Winfrey, we all know who she is, 
Um, her brand was built on her authentic personality and life experiences. And, and this exemplifies how she's had such a successful career and, and become obviously a billionaire. Um, Bill George, uh, the author of True North, highlights the importance of authenticity. And he states, authentic leaders are genuine, transparent, and consistent. For you as a coach, it means being genuine in your interactions, true to your coaching philosophy, and consistent in your values. The takeaway here, I'd like you all to reflect on your experiences and how they have shaped your coaching style. Share these stories in your communications to showcase your authenticity. A phrase that I coined and that I live by is handshakes and smiles. I believe that every interaction that we have is an opportunity for us to share who we are, who the larger community in which we serve are, our players, be it our university, our high school, our sponsors, BSN, for example, in this situation. Um, and that's all done through the simple handshake and a smile. Always, uh, I always, I live by that, the willingness to uh, let people know about who you are, uh, what you're about, what you stand for, and then obviously also share in them as well. And I think that's a win-win situation. Slide. So from authenticity, as I mentioned, the authenticity must be consistent. There's a lot of frauds out there. And uh, consistency comes with, uh, you know, application and what you're putting out there to the masses. And again, I think admitting sometimes if you fail or get something wrong, uh, but ultimately striving to be better and putting that message out, those values, those beliefs, you as a brand, who you are, setting those above, um, uh, setting high standards, and then ultimately, like I said, not, not deviating from those because, uh, you know, that brand support is key, especially as you grow it. So um, in this example, Steve Jobs' unvarying, um, unwavering personal style mirrored his approach at Apple. Uh, Schultz, Hatch, and Larson note in the, uh, the book Expressive Organization, they say a consistent identity helps build a relationship with audiences. In coaching, this translates to maintaining a consistent, uh, a, a consistent coaching style, message, and approach, whether you're on the field, in interviews, on social media. Um, consistency reinforces your brand, making it recognizable and reliable. The same things that we obviously strive to do as coaches with our players. Um, this reliability uh, is what attracts athletes, teams, and ultimately opportunities. So I would, I would say the takeaway here for you to think about is audit your current presence. Um, with your colleagues, it's, 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 a, it's a good task to do. I, I have a phrase, again, I use is being guarded by reflection. Um, but order, uh, sorry, audit your presence. You know, how, how are you perceived by your, uh, your colleagues, your teammates, your uh, reputation online, what you're putting out there into the, into the ether, so to speak? Um, all of these things are worth reflecting on uh, and making sure that ultimately they are authentic, but also that your message is consistent and evolving. I'll add that as well. The visibility and presence, especially in the digital realm, are pivotal. Pivotal, sorry. Gary V, who I'm sure everyone knows, probably got some lovers and some haters out there, is a prime example of leveraging social media platforms to enhance brand visibility. Another couple, I'm a, I'm a big guy, I teach here in the business school at Marymount University and I uh, talk a lot about um, the, the show Shark Tank. And, you know, you only have to look at basically all five of those sharks on there and how they use their digital platform to push their agendas, their products, their investments and so on and so forth. Um, so, like I said, Gary V, a prime example of leveraging social media platforms to enhance brand visibility. Uh, Montoya and Vanderhey in, in the book, uh, The Brand Called You, advise that online personal branding is about transferring your real world reputation into the online world. For coaches, this means actively engaging on platforms like LinkedIn, Twitter, or X, I'm sorry, and Instagram, sharing your insights, achievements, philosophies, uh, and those of others around you to broaden your reach and influence. So the takeaway here is, get used to regularly posting and um i'll share with you i'm 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 40 years of, of, of age uh, i'm not sort of of the generation where you know social media uh, was something i grew up in 
Um, but I've adapted to it. I, I own a sports management company. I work at a university. I, I have a wife and a young daughter. Like I, I, I enjoy aspects of it. But I can tell you this, that as I have been active on social media uh, over the past decade, the importance of as you grow and as your brand goes, trying to have, um, you know, being very cognizant of what you put out there, but doing it. Because obviously it's it's a mechanism for you to grow your personal brand, those around you, and ultimately also the opportunities that come with that. Um, I'd like to quickly use an example. I'm very active on LinkedIn. And people I know sometimes shy away from it because they get a ton of messages on LinkedIn of people trying to build a, an SEO uh, pipeline or a website. And it's like, why am I on this? Let me explain. I use LinkedIn because it's a way for me to show off to the world about the success of people around me, people in my network, first and foremost. And if I if I can be attached to that, then that's something that makes me look good. I mean, let's just be honest about this. When I had the opportunity to do this webinar here for BSN, BSN is a reputable company. They are obviously tied to the university for which I teach and which I coach at. Um, so it's logical that through those degrees of separation to want to be involved and to hopefully offer a good product. Um, so when I mention LinkedIn, something I get everyone to do when they come, I, I teach a number of courses here at Marymount as well in the business school. First class, every student must join LinkedIn and connect with everyone else because we use it as a mechanism to showcase who they are. Now they're young students in this situation, right? So they're trying to begin to build their personal brand. They're going to want internships. They're going to want jobs. How does that exposure work best? Well, LinkedIn is a tool that they're associated with me. I've been around a long time. I'm still trying to grow my brand, but I know some people in the sports world, in the business world. So that migrates. And then say if we teach a class and we have a guest speaker, I post the students, I post the guest speaker, I tag them, I tag their companies. It's good publicity. It's selfless publicity at, at, its, at, its, at, its, at, at the forefront. But the back end is ultimately you're growing opportunities for everybody in a very healthy space. Um, and then, you know, where does that lead? Well, doing this webinar for, for BSN, for example, for today, I hope ultimately it just leads to goodwill and it, it, everyone around it is sort of like, oh, it's good information and, and, uh, and that's good. It's not like I'm being paid millions of dollars. But I want to share with you guys, obviously, if it's successful, does that then lead to Saxton having me back to do another one and maybe another one? And does that lead to other opportunities to go speak or to do something else or just to ultimately to get to know the large network of coaches that are here today and that are in this network? So, so it, 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 it's, it is by design, but ultimately it's all linked to growing your personal brand and the brown brands of all of those people around you. Think of it like this. For those of you that work, for example, at a university like I do, or maybe it's for a private company or for a high school or a private club, it's often, um, I, I found it's often been um, disparaged for, for example, I, I, worked in the, I work in the tennis world. I grew up as a tennis player, played tennis, I've coached at all levels of the game. If you were a, a tennis coach working at a club, it was often frowned upon for you to almost put yourself out there because you were seen as maybe being bigger than the club or the facility. Now, I'm not saying that there's not examples of that, and you could make those parallels to pretty much any sport or any business. But you have to look at major companies and look at the different brands that can that are part of them. For example, LBMH. I mean, there's a multitude of successful brands within that umbrella. So think of it like this. I'll use Marymount University as an example. Mary Mount has 16 head coaches, and we all proudly represent Mary Mount University. We represent our conference. We represent BSN, who obviously our provider. We represent the students. We represent the larger community. But each one of us has our own unique skill set, our own brand. And how we develop that, it's the same way as if, say, Coca-Cola was the university and we are the Dr. Pepper, the Sprites, the Fantas, and so on and so forth. And it's very important to push that and to, and to really work that within the umbrella. But don't be afraid to, to step, like I said, put your head above the precipice and grow your individual brand. Because if you have strong leadership above you, They'll recognize that and it will just create more opportunities for everybody involved. Uh, okay, uh, slide. 
We're moving through this quick. I promise I won't keep you guys too long today. So I've uh, gone to LinkedIn networking. Look, it's key. I mentioned handshakes and smiles. It's something I live by. Um, networking is a key aspect of personal branding. Uh, Richard Branson's success in part is due to his extensive network across industries. Um, Porter Gale in your network is your net worth. Let me repeat that. I like that. Your network is your net worth. Captures this essence. Your network is your net worth. For coaches, network is, isn't, networking isn't just about attending events or joining associations. It's about forming genuine connections, sharing experiences, and learning from your peers. These relationships often lead to new opportunities, collaborations, and growth. So um, firstly, Tim's tip here, attending coaching seminars or sports events or being on these webinars and actively engaging with your peers is critical to growing your network and your knowledge base. It doesn't mean you're going to like everything you have to say. Uh, what what you hear and what and what you uh, sorry what you hear and what people put out there, but you sh definitely should never be of the school where I know it all and I'm going to have blinkers on. The world we're in today just moves way too fast, so I uh, applaud any of you that are on this webinar right now and, and taking the opportunity to see if something sticks. Um, so, you know, when you do attend um, webinars and and when you at attend conferences in person, uh, workshops, for example, it is imperative to follow up and to make new connections and to foster relationships, not just in your direct industry, but the broader industry as well. Uh, a tip that I, I will give you, I, I own a sports management company, we're in the facilities business, but like I mentioned, I, I, my, my background is in tennis. Um, and something that I lived by was that my vision for our sports management company was much larger than just the direct tennis industry was able to provide. So something I've always advised people to do is you can be in your niche, you can be really good and in a, in a sector that you excel in, but you are doing yourself a disservice if you are the smartest person there in the room. So looking outside the four walls, uh, reaching out across the aisle, uh, going and experiencing how different industries, different businesses operate, different people, different backgrounds, and then bring that back to ultimately what you're really passionate about. Um, I'll just tell you this story real quick. I, you know, for me in this industry, I, I was a pretty good junior tennis player. I played college tennis, um, but I was never going to be Roger Federer. And um, I managed to be able to come back and, and work uh, in the tennis industry and then the bigger sports industry. And I attended my first um, conference. It was an in-person conference in Hilton Head on Hilton Head Island in 2007. Um, to give you some context, I graduated in 2005 undergrad, and um, I saved my money to attend this conference. Why did I attend this conference? Well, it's related to um, something that I hopefully innately in me was, was, was a skill, was I knew that I never won a Grand Slam. For those non-tennis speaking people, a Grand Slam is like a major in golf, things like the US Open, Wimbledon, for example. So in, in, you know, to myself, to a few of my teammates, to a few of my high school coaches and my mom and dad, I was a pretty good tennis player. But to the bigger tennis world, that just wasn't on their radar. So I knew the importance at the time of, I think I was 25, of investing in my, uh, my knowledge base by attending conferences, even though I didn't have the money to attend it. I slept in my car because I couldn't afford a hotel and I had homemade business cards, believe it or not. Um, but I knew the importance of getting in front of people. And I knew the importance, it goes back to what I said about handshakes and smiles. Um, doesn't matter who it is, always willing to let people know who I am and what excited me and what I'm about. And also in turn, learning from them too and growing this vast network because it is so true that you never know uh, when those things, uh, th those people uh, will, be, uh, will be necessary for you in this, uh, in this journey we call life. We call life. OK, so uh, we've gone through what authenticity, consistency. Um, we touch now on the conference piece, the continuous learning and, and adaptation. You know, personal branding is dynamic, uh, requiring continual learning and adaptation. Um, consider Nadella, who transformed Microsoft by embracing change and innovation. Um, Alvin Toffler in the book Future Shock warns the illiterate of the 21st century cannot learn, unlearn, and relearn. 
For coaches, staying updated with the latest trends, methodologies, and sports science is vital. It demonstrates your commitment to growth and adapt adaptability. I have known um, I have known much better coaches than myself uh, through my years, but the difference is, and I urge you all to do this. Remember what I said: put your head above the precipice. There is a lot more out there that I think isn't necessarily what we were brought up to learn about being a traditional coach. Um, so, you know, I know coaches, like I said, that know their craft and execute it better than I do, but not many people know about them because they're basically stuck within the four walls of, the, in this case, of a tennis court. And there's no personal branding. There's no marketing. There's no outreach. And, um, and as a result, you know, their book of business isn't as large and their opportunities aren't. It doesn't mean they're not good at what they do. In fact, in many cases, they are actually better. They are students of, of coaching and the game. But have they been willing to embrace some of the things that we're talking about? Um, okay, so my tip, identify a new coaching technique, a sports business technique, uh, a relevant trend right now. Um, maybe it's through uh, social media, through YouTube, through attending a, a seminar, maybe even from today. And if you if you look back, it, and I've heard this uh, in many capacities in many different sports industries, that coaching is often considered an accidental profession. Um, it's also one where you hear that coaches in particular are you know a selfless profession and one where you know the coach is the one that sort of always bears the the brunt of the player's wrath and if the player is also really successful then they're you know the last one to be thanked and it's not that that stuff is not true to an extent but i think coaches in general do not realize they are doing themselves a disservice by not expanding their personal brand now with integrity, with a plan, with structure, all of those things are vital. You're not supposed to just be out there, you know, hot wheeling it. But if you look, for example, here, Phil Jackson, Mourinho, Jill Ellis, and, uh, you know, Patrick Mudalaglu in the tennis world, um, Nick Boletari, uh, countless other coaches, Alex Ferguson at Manchester United, Pep Guardiola, Man City. We know these people. They are as big a household names as major athletes. Um, so, and that's because they've embraced the opportunities that come with that personal branding and sharing who they are, what they're about and their overall success. So, um, I was just going to mention, so obviously, you know, Phil Jackson, his success speaks for itself. But again, if you put his picture up anywhere, you could be a, an armchair general sports fan. You would still, without the name underneath, you would know that's Phil Jackson. And you probably would as well for Mourinho and Jill Ellis as well. So each in their own right, tremendous success, but have embraced personal branding. These coaches use their brands to shape their career, influence their teams, and leave a lasting impact. Their brands have translated into tangible success, increased visibility, and numerous opportunities. So with this, Go look at coaches that are out there that have a large social media presence that are successful, um, that aren't just coaching, but are also doing public speaking gigs or TED talks or even making a cameo in a movie. It's all relative. Don't pigeon your whole thinking that's just for power five conferences or 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 pro or the very elite. It's all relative. OK, um, all of these things at some level are available to us as opportunities if we are willing to have a brand out there that people ultimately want to buy, that what they want to share and they want to be part of. Um, the next thing I'll say is this. Look, it's like this presentation. You know, it, it, this is content I've learned. It's content I've heard. It's content I've picked up on and, and have curated it here for you. It's when you're looking at these coaches who you look up to and admire, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Mimic it and then adapt it. But be, be, uh, but be aware of, of adding those tools, like I mentioned, to your toolbox. So slide, please, Saxton. Okay, so differentiate sorry differentiation through personal branding so differentiation is a key advantage of personal branding in the crowded field of coaching uh and sports 
setting yourself apart is essential. I mean, it is, I look, I, I coach the men and women's uh, tennis teams here at Marymount University. Now, as much as I love Marymount University, we don't even have our own tennis courts on campus. So you think it's important for myself as a coach and for our team to be branded successfully um, in order to get students to be excited to come and be part of the team? Do I have to be creative and look to other angles in order to execute that? That another school, for example, that has state-of-the-art brand new indoor and outdoor courts is going to have an advantage over me? Absolutely. So it's Ultimately, it's about creating a unique narrative, right, around your coaching style and your philosophy. Like I said, who are you? What are you about at your core? This could be your innovative training methods, maybe, your unique approach to player development, or even your own personal journey in the sports world. Differentiation isn't just about being different. It's about being authentically you in a way that resonates with your audience whether it's your team, prospective athletes, uh, or the larger coaching community, or larger just community in general. So my tip here, identify an aspect of your coaching style that differentiates you. What is unique about it? Um, focus on this aspect in your next team meeting or training session. Um, and utilize uh, digital platforms, social media, get feedback from your students, from your peers. And, and, and again, don't, you don't have to reinvent the wheel necessarily. Just uh, add it to the toolbox and, and keep expanding your offerings. Okay, slide, please. So obviously, as you grow your strong personal brand, it aids in recruitment and your overall marketability. A well-defined personal brand is an asset in attracting top talent and new opportunities. For example, coaches with strong brands tend to attract athletes that who resonate with their values and methods. I'm sure we can all appreciate that. Moreover, a strong brand can open doors to off-field opportunities like speaking engagements, book deals, and endorsements. It's not just about coaching on the field. It's about building a brand that expands your influence and potential income sources beyond the sidelines. Let me use myself here, not as a point of bragging, but as a real world example. I did not win a Grand Slam. I am not Roger Federer. I do not have the likes of Nike banging down my door trying to offer me $30 million a year. But I will tell you this. Remember how I said if you develop your own personal brand, if you find your niche, handshakes and smiles, and if you're willing to put your head above the precipice, you will create opportunity. That's the reason why Saxton had me on today, okay? When there's some value to what hopefully I put out there. It doesn't have to necessarily be everyone's cup of tea, as us Brits say, but that's, that's by design. I've, I've published four books. I've been a keynote speaker at multiple, multiple sports-related conferences. Uh, I do have an endorsement deal, not for millions of dollars, far from it, um, with, with a tennis manufacturer, for example. And, um, and hopefully this will lead to doing other webinars. But my point is that all of this does take some time and effort, but it also takes design. It is that you have to want more for yourself, and you also have to understand that coaches are so talented, so unique beyond what a lot of us really appreciate or understand. We have the skill set of operations, marketing, leadership, uh, um, sorry, uh, uh, you know, coaching moments, uh, um, counsel of our students, uh, planning, um, a multitude of things that your atypical person in, in, in the business world they don't have that breadth of skills, adaptability, and so on. I could go on and on. My point is, is that oftentimes we don't recognize that we can be doing extra things that will ultimately help us with our core responsibility, which is in, in this case, I'm guessing for most of you, coaching a team or an individual. But don't let yourself have the blinkers on, especially in today's digital age. There is a ton of opportunities to do just what I'm doing today. Present a webinar, looks good on the resume, puts the name out there, 
sharing in everyone's success, get to know all of you, know a little bit about me and the com uh, the university, my company, the students that I teach and so on and so forth, because it's all a point of pride, but something that, again, you are furthering your personal brand whilst also developing your network and lending a hand and an ear to listen to and help others as well. So um, what I advise on this one is, look, develop a short pitch that highlights your unique coaching approach for use in recruitment or networking opportunities. Let me use Saxton uh, in this example. I knew that BSN did webinars because I get the emails and I thought to myself, well, hold on a minute, maybe I can do one of these and it might have some value. But when I reached out to Saxton, she had no idea who I was. And I didn't just call up and say, hey, Saxton, let me do a webinar. Like I said, it's all by design. I had looked at some of the subject matter ahead of time. I had put together some ideas of what I thought I might be able to give value. I even practiced my elevator pitch, if you will, before I got on the Zoom call. So it, it does take a little time. It does take some effort. And you do need to be very deliberate. But it is ultimately worthwhile. OK, we are almost there, everyone. OK, so ultimately, look, building this lasting legacy. Focus on building a lasting legacy through personal branding. Your brand is more than a tool for immediate success. It's a vehicle for creating a lasting impact in the world of sports and the broader community for which you serve. Uh, think about how you want to be remembered. The values you want to be associated with you, your teams, your institutions, your sponsors, are... Uh, and the influence that you want to have on future generations of athletes and coaches. If one person today shoots me a message and say, hey, Tim, that was worthwhile. Thanks for your time. I sincerely mean it was all worthwhile. Um, a strong personal brand not only ensures your current success, but also secures your legacy in the sports community for years to come. And I think that it is important that Coaches do allow themselves to have that legacy and that impact because, look, success breeds success. Winning breeds winning. If the coach is seen to be successful, then it's going to attract talent. It's going to attract more opportunities and a plethora of things that we wouldn't even consider when we started off our careers in whichever line of coaching that you may be in. So. Uh, actually, I think I missed something. One second, everyone. No, sorry. OK, so. Sort of my last takeaway here, reflect on you know, what we've talked about. Um, and I urge you all, hopefully, have scribbled down some things about, you know, your brand. What would be keep it succinct? You know, that one statement. Um, what is what also would be your short elevator pitch to. Maybe, uh, I mean, let's really, let's start real simple. Say, say you're a high school coach and you're on this webinar and, um, you know, you, you, you listen to what I said about, you know, coaches having uh, a plethora of other skills beyond just the ability to say, teach um, tennis or golf or whatever it may be. And you have access to go to say, for example, um, a management class and say to the management professor here in the high school, look, Hey, um, I'm a coach and I manage players and it might be an interesting talking point. Could I come and be a guest speaker in your class? Now, with that comes responsibility. You better have something good planned out and so on and so forth. But then you go, you speak. It's something that you probably didn't even think about. But it's again, it's exposure. All of a sudden you're asked to come back. Then you're asked to be maybe an adjunct professor. Maybe this then leads you to doing it at a university, adding curriculum. This is just one very true way to do it because I, I'm, I'm an example of that. Um, there are classes that I teach that I, I would never have thought I, I would have been teaching, but it's all through continuing to put your head above the precipice and grow your network and your personal brand and not be afraid to take a few risks as well. So, as we reach the end of our session, I want to thank you all for joining me on this journey. I hope it, I was, uh, it wasn't too bad. Uh, today, we've uncovered that your brand is much more than a surface, uh, surface level image. It's a powerful blend of your identity, your philosophy, your passion for life, for sport, for people. It's about showcasing your unique strengths and sharing your story in ways that captivate, inspires, and influences. 
Remember, the journey of personal branding doesn't end here. It's an ongoing process, a game that evolves just as you do. It's about taking those small, consistent steps towards building a brand that not only represents who you are, but who you aspire to be, a brand that not only speaks to the here and now, but also is echoed in the future, uh, shaping your legacy and the overall coaching fabric as well. So I encourage you to act on the insights and strategies shared today. Start small, stay authentic, keep building. If you have any questions, uh, I'm happy to answer those now or later. Uh, please all reach out to me. My email, my LinkedIn is here as well. Here's to building a personal brand that elevates not just your career, but also the lives of, of those you coach and those around you. I want to thank you for your time, your commitment to excellence as coaches. Uh, continue to inspire, lead, and grow. Until next time, and BSN, thank you very much for having me.